Do it. I'm getting there. I left my notes at home. I'm going on my phone. We are Twatcast, episode 251. Two, 251. That's what I meant to say. Everybody knew that. Not everybody. Jimmy. Now, some, some, some of the viewers might not have known. Alright, everyone shut the f*** up. Yeah. Listening to Twatcast, the Wheel of Time re re read podcast. Now covering Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time, book one, The Eye of the World. With me as always is Jono. Jono! And I'm Joe. And Tom is sometimes here too. Yeah, and study he, your math. And he is today. S- study your pandemic math. Study your pandemic math. You know what my pandemic math has been used for? Measuring how large my gut's getting because all I do is drink. (laughs) All this working from home has just made me much more of an alcoholic than I already am. That's good news. I have had an exceptional amount of beer. (laughs) Just just a ridiculous amount. I'm not even getting drunk, but by the time it hits like 2.30, I'm like, I guess I'll have a Coors Light or yeah, that's kind of That's kind of what I've been doing. Wait, why a Coors Light? Minus the Coors Light? Yeah, because I'm not an asshole. Oh, I just just stocked up on a 30-pack of cheap beer on Saturday. In other news, I've got a 30-pack of Miller Light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're so different. Yeah, yeah. Way better. Yeah. We're also having these truly uh, hard seltzers, but lemonade flavors. Well, it's mm-hmm. summer in Massachusetts. They're delicious. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's bas- all, all I drink is hard cider, basically, so. I uh, had some just whiskey on the rocks at three. And I drink the beer. hard alcohol later in the evenings. I go the opposite. But I start with the beer. Yeah. And also, if you want to know why it is that I pass out by the end of a twalk episode, <laughs> it's because I do the opposite. <laughs> why. <laughs> I've only um, had hard, hard liquor like two or three times in the last two weeks. So, Rave Judkins and News, 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 got on Instagram and answered a bunch of questions. Including? Isn't isn't this Patreon content? Yeah, but when are we going to get around to recording on a weekend and doing a Patreon? Never. We just do it. We just do it tomorrow. Also, this is pertaining... (laughs) We're going to be in lockdown for the next three months, Joe. (laughs) Three months? (laughs) (laughs) Fucking Patreon every day. This is uh, pertaining to, specifically... Um, this episode so I thought we should talk about it Oh, we really? don't have to talk about everything you said we can save some stuff for Patreon Tom if you want to I said let's do it <laughs> uh, here's, so here's a question from some random person that I don't know what words of hope would you offer a fan afraid that the show will cut out a lot of content and Rafe Judkins said I can't um, rape <laughs> no <laughs> I genuinely think we are cutting less than most people think. When I see people ask questions like, are you cutting men? It blows my mind. Yeah! I don't know how you would do an adaption without some of these characters. I think it'll be more of the smaller stories you'll miss. We can't have Rand and May, I assume he meant Matt, travel to many, many inns on the travels across the countryside, for instance. It's just not producible. So that will be more of what you miss, I think. And the books always exist to read for that smiley face. I think it's producible if you uh, put like a really cool song under it and do like a sweet montage. Sweet well, montage. The, the, key, the key here being is that unlike what Jono was just saying, I think hate rape is basically an essential stop along the way, and the rest will just be like, yeah, we arrived in Camelot. We're hopping off the back of a wagon. We will probably miss Crayford and like what Sharon's Market or whatever, uh, but we I will go I, to I, Four Kings of Shadow. I'm, I'm pretty sure I did write the word montage four times in my very brief notes. <laughs> Also, uh, he's, someone said blink twice of Mint is in season one, and he put two blinking emojis. How would you not be? Only 180 to I'm go. I'm just saying, it's confirmation that Min is going to be in the first season. And I know, it's just people getting into a fervor thinking, like, well, one of the main characters We on this po- very podcast have told our viewers that we're worried if Min will be in or not in the show. And we're all I'm worried. not worried about it. I'm not worried about it either, but at the same time, we've... 
posited that it's possible to cut a character like that. Especially when we're drunk. We'll agree you know, to was, anything. If Min, if Min wasn't in the show, I wouldn't even watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's an interesting hard line. If you like, if you want to combine or cut like a bunch of minor minor characters, I get that. But like, that's crazy because I saw a question to him about combining Min and Elaine too, and he said he wasn't doing that. And I was like, if he did that, I wouldn't watch the show either. Yeah, take the best, take the worst, and then see what happens. Yeah, they're both somewhat crucial. Yeah, because you need to have a low to understand how great Min is. Um, I don't know how many. So again, I can save some of this if you want, oh, or we it. can trickle it out. Save it for marriage. Um. I trickle it out then. I like this one. Has any post production work begun or does that not start until filming is completed? And he said, Nope, we do it simultaneously before the corona hit. <laughs> the corona. The <laughs> My I was, corona. I was prepping two episodes, shooting two episodes, in post on four episodes, and writing season two simultaneously. So, I mean, well, obviously. He needs, a, he needs an assistant. Yeah, it sounds like he probably needs a delegate. He's a busy guy. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this one was interesting. Will we have to wait until season two to see any of the IEL, other than Rand, as a <laughs> as an aside? And he said, "Nope." And the one you will see will shock you. That ha ha ha! Amazon shouldn't let me be on here when I've been cooped up for for for, <laughs> <laughs> for a week. <laughs> uh, which are, I thought what was. Are some lo- what are some logical choices for that? Rand's mother is pretty logical and uh Ooh. dream sequences or or father or uh, like almond bunt talking to him talking Flash about her. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i think uh gall is technically the i think gall would be the one that you well, would assume if, so if the first one you see would shock us no wait, 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 wait. yeah yeah because i would say like well we see book two in like book two when, we see when, when tam's tam's fever dream you know talking about the isle war would be it but nobody there would shock us necessarily. well there's also the parent story with the tinkers and they saw the the maidens exactly he tells, yeah. tells the story of the maidens maybe they'll show us that yeah no tom's right and, and you're right like those are both really easy way to have like an ingress into other cult like kind yeah, of yeah, shit. yeah yeah well, but technically, if, book, if, if book two is in season one, then do we they see run the ones in Isle when yeah. they're going after the horn? Exactly. Yeah, we, we see. Uh, don't we see an Isle in Tarwin's Gap? Hey, you know what? None of this no, would surprise Tarwin's me. Gap. I'm not surprised. Dear Ray Judkins, not surprised. <laughs> Dear Judkins, don't Tarkins. we see? Or is that no? That's the beginning of book two. I think I'm thinking of. I think the only way for it to surprise us too, Here, obviously, the, would be they it. all run into an Isle like. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's in, uh, yeah. Not in Tarwin's Gap. That's yeah, in that's the, not Tarwin's Gap. Yeah. That's in the Ken Slayer's Dagger this year. That's, would, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. But, I mean, you would you can't do something like that because the person would have to be named. Otherwise, it's just an aisle. But they could te- technically pull out a name, like, I'm not the end of the whatever, the whatever. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And she but could I mean, just be there later or it's, or gotta, it's It's got to be more than a passing glance. Like, the person has to be introduced. Yeah. Well, he specifically says, and the one you will see will shock you. So, I mean, so perhaps he's clearly it's a shocker. named character. Yeah. Perhaps it, he's pulling it. Could, it, could, it could be Avienda if Min is less coy with her vision uh, when she talks to Rand, too, the first time about. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, you will want to fuck this IEO slut name at the end. Uh, I think the only way that it would shock us, quote unquote, is if like we see an IEL that like you wouldn't th- way out of place. You, yeah, like yeah. way out of place that you wouldn't think that oh the IEO yeah. are going to be there around that. that Literally, time. who would shock you? Nobody I guess would shock me. Cool it. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, I guess no. no I guess no one would really, like, really surprise me that yeah. much. <laughs> His dad. Just a, Matt, Matt having a conversation about how he likes big titties and Savannah shows up. It's like, oh, you like big titties? Check these out. <laughs> Some tan tits. <laughs> He's just like, who are you? And she's like, you'll find out later. <laughs> this is a shocking I'll have way more necklaces on my cleavage. <laughs> Wait, what? That was weird. That was a weird thing to call out. Other than that, I guess, I suppose one of the dreamers in a dream to, to a queen or... Oh, that would be interesting. <clears throat> that would be, I would dare I say, shocking. <laughs> I don't think it would be. Don't dare. No. Uh, like, <laughs> there's no, like, massive aisle presence where I would be like, holy shit! Um, here's, a, here's one that's kind of pertinent to what we're talking about. Will Min, Elaine, and Avienda have to be combined into a single character? Oh, that's the one I would just reference. Oh, did you? All right. Yeah. And the he answer said, was, "Girl, yes. you crazy." 
I'm not going to combine huge characters like that. Maybe sometimes a minor character folded into a more major one to make better use of our past, but nothing not so like that. Girl, you crazy. Let's get, let's get this fantasy, fantasy book series, turn it into a TV show, and be really proud of how focused it is on uh, strong women on top of it, and then take... And then fold three, three women the characters into characters one. characters and yeah. make them into one. I, I, I mean, agree. We need more screen. We need more screen time for the boys. All right, so I think we're in agreement on that. Yeah, I can keep going down this rabbit hole. Should we? I don't care. Do whatever you want. Yeah, I don't you don't can care do either. what you want to. Um, is any aspect of the show still in development, or has it all stalled because of the virus? A lot can be done virtually. I'm di- I'm still doing VFX editing in season two virtual writers rooms, and I can do it all in my pajamas. <laughs> I can't wait to see like the last episode of season one is just like complete anime trash. <laughs> <laughs> just turns to animated halfway through. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is happening? Just at the bottom, just says COVID nineteen sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking sucks. Oh, by the way, to our black, viewers out there, black like, and white stick figure drawings moving around. <laughs> uh, coronavirus update for Twilcast here. Uh, me and John were still in the same room because we're we, we refuse. Yeah, are you, I mean, are I don't care. We're, apart? We're, we're being safe. Yeah, we're, are you six feet apart? Uh, we're about four and a half. Yeah, at least, yeah, yeah, yeah it's almost the top. Our so faces are six feet apart. Seventy-five percent is an almost. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what. I seventy-five percent. Well, my feet orgasm. aren't gonna cough on Jono's feet, John. Well, also, like- neither of us are sick. <laughs> God, John. <I'm- laughs> um, here's one that I thought was interesting. Will we see the prologue from the Eye of the World on screen in season one? And he just said, "You will hear that phrase." What? Yeah, I don't really know what that means. Obviously, it's got to get something. Isn't it Jonna's favorite line? <laughs> Is it <laughs> the castle still shook occasionally? The palace. The palace. <laughs> oh, the palace. <laughs> I don't know what Is that it wrong? <laughs> oh, does it have memory? What's wrong with me? Yeah. That's a, I, technically, I get it wrong every time, by the way. There's like a line I'm missing. But I don't Isn't, know. What, what, other, what other line is there from the prologue, bit? Ilyana. Ilyana. It's just a rehash. That's not a phrase. Ilyana. Ilyana. I suppose there could be other lines, but after having done this with Jono for 10 years, that's the only one I can remember. What about I, I win again, Luz Theron? <laughs> well, that's not in this one. Does he say that? Is that in the, pro- the prologue? No, that's in book two. Like, he talks about how he is yeah. winning. Sounds like Charlie Sheen, apparently. Uh, but that he doesn't say I win again, Luz Theron. I don't, think, I, don't, I don't think there's any iconic or memorable line from that prologue except the very first line I, was, I could be wrong Yeah, I don't think that's the line because that's only memorable to you, me, and Jono and our, and our viewers probably every, <laughs> everybody else that's read The Eye of the World 20 times I, don't, I guess I mean, I, I mean, even Jono that only sticks out to Jono because he listened to the audio tape, audio tape, tape like a thousand country. times in a row <laughs> Fucking, it's kind of zone in on the first line of the prologue like a madman. I like, I just, it's just a joke because John was crazy. Yeah, there's that. I mean, the only thing that's else that's interesting is just kind of like the amount of history that's put here that you don't understand how relevant it is. The rest of yeah. it, it's just kind of, you killed your own wife, you psycho. All right, the I'll, end. I'll repeat what I've been saying that's all along. Dialogue. I really hope it's just the intro to the show. Like, via tapestries or, like, stained glass windows or something. Da, 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 yeah, yeah, like, da, da. something like that. Like, the, every intro of the show just starts with, like, Dragon Mount forming and, like, death and <laughs> just the breaking the world. Dick. Yeah. It'd be cool. I mean, whether or not they do that, who the fuck knows. But I think that would be a really good way to do it without actually showing it in the actual show. They have that overlaid. You can start with Ren and Tam walking down the street, street if you do that, you know. Yeah. They have that overlaid Where? with the original, like, like Winter Dragon pre- uh, prequel yeah. thing. <laughs> I, was, I was positive John was going to start singing Paul Snyder. <laughs> Which one? What? <laughs> He I was like, wait, I'm with you. Tam, I'm not with Rand you. Tam walking down the street. Me and Tam walking down by the schoolyard? That's not Paul. Yeah. It's me and Julio walking down by the schoolyard. Yes. Wow, that was a reach, and I'm glad to pick up on you. <laughs> Jesus. 
Jesus. <laughs> and yes, that is Paul Simon. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Can't wait for the next. <laughs> yeah. Here's another one. Please tell me you've cut Narg. Never. Exclamation <laughs> point, exclamation <laughs> point. <laughs> that was submitted, bit. by the way, by Narg. <laughs> The one misfire of having a talking Trolloc is going to make this shit. I really hope that was from Trolloc talk. It very well may have been, because he has a jokingly large hatred for Narg. And it's a long-standing joke that he does online, but I don't think anyone else knows or understands <laughs> what he's doing. But uh, hopefully that was from him. That'd be funny. Uh, how will you be handling sword forms and their names? <laughs> We have a for real sword master on the show who walks into every room and tests out everything as a weapon. He could most definitely kill me with any item in our office. That wasn't the question, but it's I a like very it. It's a very dodgy answer. Yeah. Well, I mean, how else would you handle it? They would practice and name the forms. That doesn't seem... Well, I mean, I guess him saying we have a real sword master is an answer to the question. Yeah, yeah. it is. It doesn't, Chip. <clears throat> it doesn't seem logistically difficult. <clears throat> What would you say the CGI to, pr- to practical ratio is going to be? Six to nine. Trying to do as much in camera as we possibly can. So it's going to be as real as they can make it, it looks like. That's a escapist answer, but all right. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's all you can say. I mean, like, like, what are you supposed to say? We're going to do the whole thing with the well, fucking like he has an actual math. Math. He didn't study his math, I don't know. You know, like, he doesn't have an actual answer. He's not going to be like, it's 70-30. He's just going to be like, We're, listen, we do as much in the camera as we possibly can. That's an yeah. answer. It's... Uh, 98% green screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be the weatherman. Just point it over here. <laughs> you, there. you all know the difference anyway, you fucking rubes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Just one dickhead answer. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be the best. <laughs> you wouldn't know the fucking difference, you idiots. Idiots! Oh. Um... <laughs> RJ writes a lot of internal headspace stuff. What's number one? What's one hint on how the show will handle that? That's the biggest difficulty of any novel adaption: figuring out how to make the internal monologue come out clearly to the audience. Whoa! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! We've talked about this. It's called inner space loose narrative. Yeah, you just have a you just have somebody playing his inner thoughts. A yeah. lot of the changes we make and the stories we tell differently are designed to serve exactly that purpose showing you what those characters internal monologues from the books are without them just saying it out loud in exposition <laughs> it just they, has the Austin just powers have the people that read the audiobooks constantly reading those parts and then <laughs> well, and the actors like freeze in place as best they can and then oh, they yeah, they should get, uh, uh, yeah Kate and uh, what, uh, Kate Redding and yeah, Michael yeah. Kramer yeah yeah, you should get Michael Kramer to play Luce Theron in Michael, a spaceship. Michael Kramer actually just plays parent or, or Matt and just yeah. like constantly just kind of like puts out what's on his thoughts. Glad we're here. <laughs> just always there. So the fourth the fourth Taviran shows up as always played by Michael Kramer. Yeah. So he's just kind of you know, he's Taviran, so he's just always around the action of a rant. Yeah. So let's get out. Daff. Yeah. With a badger. <laughs> so that what Kate Radding plays. Just the badger. <laughs> What do you think Dad what do you think Dad did with that badger? It's right over there. Any funny behind the scenes stories? No. I once walked up to Rosamund's dummy to say hello and then pretended to check its makeup and told everyone they were doing great work. I don't know what he means by dummy. <laughs> Does she have a crass test dummy that's dressed like her that's on set? Like what were once they doing? <laughs> there was this girl. Because he doesn't say like stunt performer like <laughs> just they have like a fake Rosamund Pike just sitting on set and he's like oh hey Ro- that's not her I'm gonna pretend like I was just checking on something all I can think of is like something where she they're about what? to film something where she catches on fire or something and like, like like in the part we just read actually like in this in this section yeah I remember like she like is like headless at one point like all sorts of weird dreams that's about what I've got. I, yeah, I don't really know. I mean, obviously they have something on set that looks like a human. Yeah. And was dressed like Rosamund Pike. And he walked up to it thinking it was her. And then pretended like it like he wasn't making a dumb mistake. And was like, hey, this looks good, everybody. And then walked away. Yeah, that What is. the fuck does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Can I get a Rosamund Pike sex doll that looks like Moran? Yeah. All right, you're all doing good work. That's basically what he's <laughs> talking about. <laughs> looks good enough for me. <laughs> Why isn't there any clothes on this? <laughs> the makeup's great, though. Yeah, this is great for quarantine. I'm going to take you back to my room. 
Um, if you were nice at I, what Ajay would you choose? <laughs> I, I didn't know what this said until I read it aloud, and I wish I hadn't and skipped this one. <laughs> Such a good question. They all have merits, but green for the win, if only to hang with Priyanka Bosa. To, oh. He puts at, it's the at some, it's her call sign. She's, a uh, Alana. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've only to hang out with the actress Alana. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> I, was, I was somewhere noisy, so I had to mute the phone. I'm really glad that happened at the time you were talking about the Rosamund Pike dummy because I had like so many just <laughs> like horrible, <laughs> horrible things. To say. Inap- inappropriate things to say. Rosamund Pike? No. Moving on. Definitely not that. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> hey, I'm filthy, but I'm inclusive, Jenna. <laughs> So am I. How are you planning to handle the visualization of the weaves? Any little tidbits? Question mark. We are trying to stay as true to the books as possible. I've been giving a bunch of VFX folks long diatribes about channeling weaves, threads, earth versus air, etc. And the early stuff, I assume he meant the, the early stuff has started coming in. It looks fucking awesome in all caps. I screamed when Rosamund started channeling. Well, that's it's funny that he's, It's funny to say that I'm trying to keep it as close to the books as possible, but then saying that because if it was close to the book, you wouldn't be able to see anything, really. Shh, maybe it's... I think I the think director what? can channel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, my response to that is like... If you're keeping it to the closest books as possible, that means if someone can channel that's nearby is seeing it, then you can see it. And if not, if you won't. The director... That, that, that's going to make that like insanely complicated. I think that would help keep down on the visual effects. Like, Moran can channel when everyone's around her at the beginning because no one can actually see her doing it. They would look so stupid constantly doing that with no visual effects. <laughs> I think it'd be kind of cool. Like, at first she's just, like, putting her hands on Tam's forehead and then he's healed. Like, you don't see anything. And then later on is, like, then even a glean start, like, channeling. They, they can see it or maybe, I don't know. There, there's yeah, I guess, yeah I, I, I guess there's a million ways to do it. Um, maybe we're, maybe you're right, Tom. Maybe we'll just fucking show her doing cool ass weave right away. <laughs> just standing there like doing the fucking weird bat dance. And yeah, then, like hundred feet away, somebody catches on fire. You know what? I was just <laughs> I th- I was just telling Jono and Chanda this, but I, I me and Lauren are, have been rewatching the Avengers movies, and I was like, I was watching, uh, what's her name? Olsen? Ja- what's her Bree? No, no, no. Elizabeth Olsen? Yeah, Elizabeth Olsen. Oh, yeah. Did you say the Scarlet Witch? Yeah, Scarlet Witch. I was watching Scarlet Witch fucking doing the, like, hand motions she does yeah. to do the... Oh, for a minute there, I thought you said you were watching Elizabeth Olsen fucking... <laughs> well, yes. And I'm gonna, need, I'm gonna need that link. I mean, her and Vision were just into it. You know what I mean? Whew. But she's doing those weird, like, finger things she does for, like, her magic powers. And yeah, I was like, tell me more about and it. And I was just thinking to myself, like, <laughs> how ridiculous she must look without VFX, like, around her. <laughs> like, everyone else is, like, pretending to punch, but at least that, like, makes sense. Yeah. She's just going, like, I'm casting a spell. And I'm like, what the fuck? She like must a, look like a fucking <laughs> idiot. Weird, large She's like, on set. Harry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a scene in, like, I, I don't remember. Oh, it's Civil War, Captain America Civil War, and she's doing like a random, like, she's talking to Vision, and she's like, Bef- well, before this, I was normal. And she's like waving her hand, and that's all it is. It's like a little red energy, like, goes between her fingers. And I was like, that actor is just standing there looking at this other actor and just wave her hands around and be like, well, before this, I was a normal person. I mean, what <laughs> happens? That must have looked like so weird. What happens in every single scene where uh, Tony Stark uses a computer? Th- that's true, too. Like, just waving just his hand around. standing there waving his arms in the air. Holding up his phone and, like, tapping it at the air and being like, now move this over here. Yeah, you're right. We do realize that they went to a lot of LARP scenes to kind of watch what they did and just was like, oh, all right, well, I can't look down on that shit. And that what was their bro. Like when he has the mask. Is yeah, I want to see this. I want to see the set. Black cloth. Yeah, I, mean, I imagine it's just a box around his head, right? And he just yeah, like stands. In, he just puts his head in a box and starts talking. Maybe. 
we should talk about this book. <laughs> <laughs> We are I, was, far I don't care about the books. I was watching this hilarious fucking thing with Benedict Cumberbatch, and he was talking about the movies, and he randomly started talking about him being smog, and I guess I never knew this, but he physically acts smog out. So uh, yeah. it, it showed this fucking scene where he's laying on mats, like yoga mats, like or like mats in a gym, you know, like the thick yeah. mat, you know, you'd flip around on, and he's like, you know, covered in dots or whatever, and he's like acting and using his hands as wings, and he, he's just like talking, <laughs> saying all the smog lines, and he, he's talking, he's talking to literally no one, he's acting yeah. off of nothing. And it was just the funniest fucking thing in the world. I was just like, that looks amazing. Can you imagine finding that at your local gym? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just someone would be like, I'm small. And you're just like, <laughs> you're on a mat and it kind of half doing a push up. Yeah. It's very strange looking. Yeah. I don't think you're supposed to be here, sir. All right, we'll save the rest of these. There's not that many more. Actually, fuck it. We'll do the rest. <laughs> fuck you, Tom. Yeah, fuck you, Tom. Who's well, your favorite for Sick? diving on the Avengers. What's that? <laughs> I said once we started deep diving on the Avengers, I was like, anytime. We got on. into a VFX discussion. It's normal. Who's your favorite Forsaken? I love the ladies, Grendel, Lanfear, Mogidian. And Ishmael holds a special place in my heart the more time I spend with him. My only response to that is like, that's not your... Well, what's your favorite? You need yeah, to answer the question. Yeah. I love the ladies. Pick one! You know who it's not. Pick one, Rafe. So if you like the girls and you like half, and then throw one of the guys on there on top of it. Well, I suspect it's the guy and he just felt like he needed to say the girls. <laughs> Who is your favorite Aes Sedai? I think this is the last one, huh? Nope, there are thirty more. Yeah, it's the last one. Who is your favorite Aes Sedai in the books? And you can't say Moraine, Suan, or the Wonder Girls. And he said, so many rules. I honestly love all of them, though, except Galena, that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, was, hey. I have to interrupt his answer with laughter. Alana, Leandrin, and Varen are probably my top three. And Suwan. What the fuck? There's too many I love. Sherium, Pavara. What? I mean, okay. Sherry. Pavara? Who loves Sherium? She's a fucking black eyes of bitch. Whoa, what? Spoiler alert. Yeah, I know. But she's at least interesting and tries to struggle against that tendency. Like, on and off. No. I mean, she freaks out because she thinks she's going to be found out. Yeah, well, and yeah. that's it. Struggle. She's not struggling against being a Black Aja. She's struggling against everyone finding out that but she's Black Aja. Does she recruit anyone too actively? Not really. Who's your favorite Aes I don't know. Guy? Yeah. What's that? Who's your favorite Aes Sedai? Uh, aside from Wonder Girls, uh, Swan, and Moraine. Oh, was Elaine going to make a list? Well, well, the Wonder Girls, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. The, the question was originally that. I would go with Varen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Varen, for sure. Yeah, Varen. She's the only one on the list after those people are off the list. Yeah, it's definitely Varen. I mean, I do like Pavara, but she just comes into it way later, and I don't care as much. Agreed. I don't have as close of a connection, I guess is what I'm saying. Varen's a badass. Yeah, Varen literally... She's also crazy, and I love her. Yeah, that's great. Like, she upends so much shit from the inside. Like, that is what a nice... I mean, I think that's an easy answer. Yeah, I... I, I don't like parents that don't like fat chicks. (laughs) That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is our episode covering the eye of the world. And before I continue, spoiler warning. There it's fat. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of spoilers in the next couple of chapters that we discuss. <laughs> the last 20 minutes, too. And uh, the last intro to this episode. <laughs> anyway, Eye of the World, written by Robert Jordan, chapters 32 through 34. Yeah, and also, spoiler warning... And also TVMA for uh, anal rape. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. We don't know for sure. I think we do. Although I've got some interesting point of view on this. Do we? Uh, um, chapter 34. I have no notes for this show because I cleverly left them at home. Congratulations to our viewers because they're going to listen to Jono explain every chapter. Well, and it chapter will be, 34. And it will be very things. concise, Tom. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> the title of the chapter is Blank, and Four it kings. stars Blank. Four Kings in Shadow, it's a Rand chapter. And Matt. But it's from Rand's point of view. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 
I kind of strayed away from calling out point of views in my chapter recaps because I realized that eventually there will be chapters that have many point of views. So That's true. I just started saying, this is who's in the chapter. Should we give Tom? You've got the notes? Yeah, Tom, you want to do, give your quick recall? <laughs> the recap is just uh, Four Kings, Samuel Haig, Goat. 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 Lightning. Goat. Oh, like sparkle. Things. Lightning crashes. Hanuma <laughs> the he's like, guy. He's, yeah. like, he's like Thor with sparkle fingers. That's a, hor- that's a horrible song. That is an aw- it does say the word placenta, which is funny. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't hear any thunder, but uh, was that sparkles that came out of your fingers? <laughs> yeah. You know, the door did slam right behind me. I was kind of hoping you picked that up, so it did actually sound like it did sort of. It did, it did sort of sound like thunder. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, uh, an, an old mother dies. <laughs> well, pretend that was planned. Let's talk about it. Jono. So uh, let's see. Honest things. Wait, just, real quick before we before we talk about it, I just want to say I don't want to talk about it because we did it perfectly the last time. <laughs> you know what? Um, here's the thing. You remember that, but we didn't. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. We glossed over it very quickly. Oh, do you know what I do have in my brain, but not in notes form? Is uh, notes from the old Twaka set. I was going to ask for, for that. Because I feel like this one, one had to have been So, a so far, we, so we talked about this chapter, obviously, but it was very short. Tom, you're welcome, is the one who uh, presented the idea that they were possibly going to rape them and not just rob them. <laughs> <laughs> but no one said hake rape. I guess we coined that phrase later when we were referencing the older episode. <laughs> but uh, it was pretty funny. But we also didn't speak about it in very l- long length in- at all because we had like a thousand chapters to cover that episode and we moved on pretty quickly. So. The idea of covering I mean, this in four parts. We covered it well, but we covered it very briefly, yeah. almost as briefly as Tom's recap just then. So honestly, I think it's fine. <laughs> well, I guess let's hear Jono's notes. I, I mean... What is there to talk about? Genre. I mean, I, I, I love the tension ramping up in the chapter. I like everything that's going on in the common room, and like I think it's a it's one yeah, of those it things. That I probably over well, probably say it every goddamn time, but in this case, it's extra emphasized. That I love how he describes this because yeah. it's not just this is our first chapter where we're in somewhere that's ominous, not because like. Hey, we're in a fucking deserted fucking, you know, shithole city that's dead. You know, should I look off? (laughs) Yeah. We're instead, you know, in the center of a population, like what should be a booming town, but everything's kind of ratty and dirty. Yeah, they kind of recognize immediately how unlike... It's very ominous. Two rivers, but also how unlike everything else it is. Like, it's not like the rest of Andor. It's kind of like a... Yeah, it's a shit. It seems like a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone hates each other. No one's saying hi to each other in the streets. They're all, like, getting glared at before they're... They're just walking, and they're like, fuck you. And you're like, what did I do? Like, it's raucous laughter. It's like... And it's Oh, raucous laughter. Raucous laughter. Oh, God, that's a pure... That's a, <laughs> it's a clear <laughs> signal that it's a horrible place to live. And, like, you know, of course, you know, why not make the imagery also be uh, confounded by, you know, the clouds also coming overhead, ready mm-hmm. to boom. So, well, we got to stay in this shithole. Uh, and then, of course, we get ourselves a, like a skinny innkeeper who's, you know, so fucking dirty. Like, you don't know what's cleaner his hand or what's dirtier his hands or his apron. Like, yeah. it's all very unsettling. And you're kind of like, but it could not be if he were to do an about what's face. What's dirtier his hands or his apron? <laughs> it could not. It would be, be really funny if it was just like this peaceful, lovely thing. Like, oh, welcome. Have a good night. But obviously we went for the right direction, which is, oh, welcome. I'm going to rape the shit out of you. Uh, Do we ever get a skinny innkeeper again in the rest of the series? I don't think we did. I think there's one, and Rand actually calls out how nervous he is by it because of Sam Interesting. Ray. I wonder if I, that's, that's true. That's my so, memory, is which that? is uh, drunk. Um, yeah, okay. <clears throat> anyway, so I love the fact that Samuel Haig here, by the way, is a woman puncher. And yeah, Jesus. That a male was, like, rapist. brutal. I don't know. Allegedly. Alle- yeah, potentially. <laughs> Allegedly in the past, potentially in the future <laughs> of this evening. I want to talk about, and I'm going to quote a less than savory movie that is one of the best of all time. I want to talk about the fact that he punches this, or backhands this lady in the face, who of course falls over. And he then just, slaps her. Yeah, yeah, and then you're dot for the wine and beverage. Did you did you hear her mouth it off to him? <laughs> she deserved what <laughs> she Fuck got. Fucking bitch. Yeah. It reminds me of. <laughs> I went and watched the quote so many times today because I'm a bad person. 
<clears throat> in uh, Mel Brooks's Blazing Saddles, yeah, when they're talking about how hot it is outside, and the Asian guy falls over, <laughs> and, and he goes, "Doc, that," and then he says a racial uh, term, "a day's pay for napping on the job." <laughs> like that is exactly what this reminds me of. It's like, "Doc, this bitch, a day's pay for fucking falling over." Like, you hit her. <laughs> you slapped the, you slapped her right in the face and then you said you're docked for the breakage and the wine. Now get back to work. You bent. Yeah. Yeah. Like holy shit. We should also watch Blazing Saddles and watch me cackle at all the racist shit in there. Well, it's very funny. Yeah, it is very funny. It's very rackest. <clears throat> very rackest. I know that it's a C. Uh so I've got to be honest. Like, like when do we find Rake? Hey, or, <coughs> Rake. Yeah, yeah, we Rake, find yeah. Rake. Um, <laughs> <coughs> already ready. Uh, you're coughing a lot. Do you have the? Do you have Corona? Glad you're in my house. Uh, um, get six feet. Get six feet away, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a corner. Get, get six feet away. He can't go any further. <laughs> Uh, I just back into the chair as far as I can go. This is it. That's all I got. <laughs> Looks like Professor Slughorn hiding in it. Try, yeah, I just start molding into the chair. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, um, yeah. But Hake is very disquieting on himself. Like Hake Judkins? Yeah. <laughs> Samuel Hake Judkins? That's exactly where my mind went to. <laughs> That's why he's not. What characters are going to be? Well, first off, my father will be represented better. I mean, uh oh. Uh, but uh, to me, like, I don't know what the fuck that is. Oh, it doesn't matter. Tommy, you still there? Yeah, no, it was oh, a text. All right. It, yeah, it was a text. Sorry. That came the, John's phone lit up, and I was like, I don't know what this weird non iPhone is doing. Uh, so, <clears throat> I do have to say, though, if he's a rapist, I don't think that Rand. I think Rand kind of let him on a little bit. Whoa, well, if? Uh, well, like. Well, I mean, I, are you a rapist if someone's leading you on before the, the one, hashtag the me too question? You, the, one, <laughs> the one thing you don't do when you encounter a male rapist is offer to play the flute for him. If followed by, what song does he play? Cock of the North. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to, to be fair, he's not from the North, so he doesn't know. Yeah. He doesn't know any better. Yeah. It's a country bumpkin. Yeah. But, again... He's a sheep herding flautist from the south. Yeah, he's not <laughs> from the west, really. But yeah, <laughs> but so is he a rapist? I mean, would he have been here if it wasn't for what clearly looks like your honor yeah. leading on? I mean, Rand even says like later on in the chapter when they're walking down the dark hallway, he's like he tried to get his dick hard. <laughs> so, I mean, what if what if Rand and Matt were like two poor girls with nothing even worth stealing? They would have definitely... Those guys would have definitely raped them. Those guys are super rapists. That's true. I, I agree with Tom. I don't know if they're super rapists. I mean, they should do better. <laughs> Clearly, they're not that great at rape. All right. They're average rape. Thank you. They're just large and into... I think they're really good at rape. They just got cut... The, the, go beat them to the chase because he poisoned them <laughs> or knocked them out or something. <laughs> they're very good at rape, but Matt and Rand are better at not being raped. <laughs> no, they, <laughs> no, they have nothing to do with it. The dark friend, Goad, knocks them out before they can... They can Enact the raping. Yeah, it's very dis- it's very discomforting. It's de- that's definitely what it is. Yeah. Ironically, this is they were this whole this whole situation though, to back the tension building part, this whole situation freaks me the fuck out. This whole chapter is very edgy. We you started getting worried. The more and more Rand's like, we gotta get out of here, and Matt's like, Can't we just eat some food? And he's like, No, we gotta it go. It's terrifying. It's terrifying when he goes out back and sees the coach. Yeah, and then either Jack nor- or Strom, I don't remember which one, but as one of them is like, Hey, what are you doing out here? Shouldn't be out here by yourself. <laughs> I got a bet with my buddy over here. He's a rapist. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and I, I got a bet with him of whether or not the, you stole that sword or not, or if you don't even know how to use it. He's like, I know how to use it. Yeah. By the way, my bet is please don't know how to use it because that would not be good for a guy. Yeah. Who just please uses don't it. actually be a heron mark blade user. Because how would you how would you steal a sword from a blade master? It does seem like a pretty bad call. Like. I- because you know what? He's probably a blade master and has a second sword well, around Well, so the him. key is that he doesn't take the sword off for the rest of the night, but keeps playing music. And then even the crowd is, like, making fun of him. He's like, oh, you think you're playing that badly? <laughs> you need your sword? <laughs> and then he's just like, but that actually does set <clears throat> Samuel Hake, like, a little on edge and keeps him back a little bit. Well, you know what it would is. Be, you, would be, you would be a fantastic heckler in medieval times. I know. I, I want to be cast as an extra. Hey, ah, you, th- <laughs> you think you need that sword? Hey, you're playing that bad, you guy? Again, I don't... Burned him. Hey, 
<laughs> You're hired. <laughs> Bird. If I could, hey, if hey, I could guy. Those, you think those, you need that sword to play? The, fl- the flute? Devil's advocate. Did I get it? Did I get it? I don't think it's fair because Rand is again showing a sword, phallic object, flute, phallic object. If Samuel Hake. Wait, why is the sword a phallic object? Because it looks like a. Talking dick. about the movie Seven? Yeah. You know, because um, mine is weirdly thin. And just no, but of... seriously, like back to so. Well, hold the... on. What's what's the people's case here? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. Sure. I think that we're all assuming that Samuel Haig, who clearly looks like a rapist, acts like a rapist, allegedly, uh, massively. Uh, you know, Rand is leading him on again. You know, playing cock in the north, doing this, showing just like dick shit, like dick, uh, and then like, hey. Uh, yeah, he doesn't take the sword belt off, but then he puts his cloak over it and it kind of drapes around the sword hilt. Yeah. And he's like, check this out. Yeah, and then he's like, While I'm playing the flute. And again, the later, flute. he's going to be like, hey, show me to my room. Yeah. Again, show me to my room. Like, well, maybe come in for a drink while you're at it. Fuck me behind. You know, yeah. like, like, God damn it, Rand. <laughs> it's fucking disgusting. I, I noticed there's no lock on this door. <laughs> Maybe so you can enter. The my door room pushes later. in just like you can to me. <laughs> so, all right, so wait a minute. Is Hank a rapist? Is Rand a tease or are they both? Both. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> also, seriously though? Also, Matt's just caught up in this. He's just, he has no idea. <laughs> He's just, he's just juggling balls. Yeah, he's like, you know what, man? There's nothing. Wait a minute. He's not insinuating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's not insinuating anything, dumb. He's just juggling balls for the entertainment of all the crowd. He's got his tongue out at him. It's very weird. Look, I'm, we're just going to finger this flute, juggle these balls, leave us alone. Now show us where the bedroom is. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to be raped. But we do. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. All of, <laughs> I don't know how much clearer I can make about holding this rod and balls that I don't want to be raped. <laughs> I like that Hank rape, a 10-year running joke, has now turned into a Hank, did he rape her? Did he rape him? I don't think so. He was brought on to this. He was led on. <laughs> he asked Honestly, we're, for we're it. Really, we're really expanding on it. Especially I mean, the irony in, of in the Me the, Too generation. The, We've got the, the opposite. Best, in all the best ways. Yeah. <laughs> We've taken the Me Too and just fucking turned it right around. No one, Me Too. No one kind of puts a, a an interesting note on it and then a little ties a little bow on the end of this for us is that it's like when they go, when he does show them to the room, he's like, all right, let's get out of here. And Jack and Strom are like, what the fuck? <laughs> what, we're not going to rape him? I've got to be honest. In fairness. They've been asking for it all night. It yeah. seems like they were going to rape and rob him. <laughs> like, if, if it had been like, like 12 years later, this would totally have just been like a, and then we're going to fuck your ass. Like, like kind of thing. I really feel this is very rapey. Like, especially his general disdain towards Yeah, we've been saying that for does 10 years, not mean, <laughs> Does not mean that he's necessarily a rapist. Just his general disdain for women. You know, doesn't mean anything. But it all sounds like a good package of... I'm shocked he didn't lead into like the group shower room before showing him the bed. Well, the problem with the group shower room clearly a back door, if you know what I mean. Soap isn't on a rope in that room. Yeah, you can drop it a lot. Yeah, we don't want that. We want to drop it once, just once. I mean, any any number of times. Don't pick it up. No, no, stop picking it up. (laughs) Just no ropes. (laughs) Tom's giggle makes me really happy. So he uh, blocks off the door. Yeah. Are we to the end of the night? Do you want to get there? Get get to the dark room part? Uh, well, we didn't really we're talk too much about... around a bit. Yeah, so this is a great inn, as we've talked about. There's knife oh, fights. Oh, the dancing Cartman? One of knife, my favorites. Knife fights, groping. Uh, like, just... Like, again, our clearly angry rapist dudes just watching them get groped for, like, three minutes, four minutes, and now I'll rescue them. <laughs> like, just letting these chicks get felt up and, like... I, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, there there are other villages that's not where, far that's away where the business, that's with where the plenty of other from. inns in them. Just move <laughs> ten miles down the road. It's not get, even get a job at a different inn, doing the same job where you don't get fondled nonstop. Because you gotta, you have to build a whole new house. I mean, I think just burn, just burn four kings to the ground. That's all I'm saying. It's it a does, horrible place. It seems appropriate. Yeah, <laughs> it's a horrible place. If only the fire had spread from the lightning, <laughs> and just and just decimated the whole town. It's a horrible village. I don't know. I don't understand why the queen's guard doesn't get out there more. It often. does seem a little concerning, especially considering that four. I mean, kings, they're relatively close. Four kings should be the biggest town. 
outside of Camelot to the west, really, besides it's one maybe of one. the biggest, I would assume. Well, if you look at it, I mean, like, as far as, like, a trade map shows... Yeah, I mean, it's on the map, yeah. It's, it's I, on the map. I studied the map. I studied the map. There are, there are a lot of other inns. Why doesn't the village council do something about this guy? Another good question, actually. Uh, well, they're all as corrupt and rapey as Samuel Haig, apparently. <laughs> but the other city... They're all into it. <laughs> well, I guess you have, like, you get seven or eight good taverns, and you get rape tavern. And you say, like, well, whoever goes there kind of deserves it. Also, where does this come from? Because it's not just, like, like it's not like it's every just the village has a rape tavern. Everyone's got to have a rape tavern. <laughs> every country, at least. Yeah. I don't... <laughs> I, it's not like it's just the inn. It's, like, the surrounding populace that... It, it's the people, too. That My suck. guess is... It's just all the farmers in the area. What if it... Someone, like, a thousand year ago, years ago picked up a pebble from... Rape Tavern! From, uh... From Shatter Logoth, carried it over to Four Kings, dropped it <laughs> in the ground. But, but it was the rape pebble. It wasn't the murder pebble, just, suspicious pebble. Just just a pebble. And that much evil has spread out over thousands of years and just this whole area is shit. <laughs> you've got the murder dagger and you've got the rape spoon. <laughs> and that's what they make the soup with. All right, so let's cut to, uh... The only they th- think it's going to be Samuel Haig, but it's not. It's Goad. So let's talk about Samuel Goad, who, All by right. the way... Not Samuel Goad. Uh, I mean, Howell Goad. Howell Goad. Yeah. I always, pictured, I always pictured Goad as the guy that comes to the bar in Raiders of the Lost Ark to try to get that medallion after they have the drinking Oh, cover. that's 100% accurate. <laughs> I love that. Not idea. quite fleshy enough. Later on, he, yeah, like, yeah. burns his hand on a, on Matt's ruby dagger. Hilt, yeah. his, his ruby hilted dagger sticking out of his pants. <laughs> it's red rocket. It's I, a parent. I don't have I don't have a firm idea of anybody in my head, but I've always had that one for some reason. That's fun. I like it. It works so, for me. So we find out that our friend Howell Goad uh, It is that exact situation. Whether or not I would cast that actor as this man, not necessarily, but it's that exact feeling. He presents the same feeling. That's probably why. <laughs> so Goad's from Whitebridge, we find yeah. out. Or he's is he from Whitebridge or is he just been chasing us? Well? <laughs> I don't know if we need to get hung up on that. Has chased from Whitebridge, we'll mm-hmm. call it. Uh, which is funny because, like, I was just asking for clarification. No, I, I, I don't mind it, but it, it, to me, I feel like he's laden this chapter with so much like foreboding emotion. Yeah. And I like that after dinner, Matt's just staring at him for the rest of the night. Oh, I fucking love it. <laughs> Like, like Rand's all nervous about it. I'm like, Matt being a crazy paranoid person with a dagger right now hey, is probably right helping you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's probably helping you. He's just like, fuck you, dark friend. Just staring at him across the room the whole night, juggling balls, not breaking eye contact. Middle finger every time. Just, just yeah. grab middle finger. Grab middle finger. What bothers me? That dagger down. would be a horrible wingman. <laughs> yeah. You're in a bar, like, I think that girl's looking at me, and he's like, which one? <laughs> Stay better for the next hour. <laughs> I would love to hear Matt Cawthon wingman stories now. <laughs> Man, I had like a hundred percent chance of getting laid, and then I mean, fucking was Joe just, just bro- stared her down and just started yeah, talking. And then up. he pulled a badger out of the bag. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, what STDs you got? Like, None. I bet. <laughs> Excuse me? There was just there was staring at her back. Complete veg. lack of sarcasm in that. <laughs> just suspicious of every pussy he finds. Very annoying and weak man. And then he s- slapped her in the face and said he'd charge her for the <laughs> broken b- breakage and uh, wine. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> give me a moment to recollect. Apparently. <laughs> I would have liked, I think, uh, this is one of the most ominous chapters, to a certain extent, kind of in the whole book, as far as yeah. just, like, on a personal, maybe the whole series. Like I mean, it builds up to an awesome Personal moment. basis. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I don't want more here. I want more before and after. Like, like I want to know, I wish that we had seen the Howl Goad thing in Whitebridge, so it would have stuck Oh, out. so, like, it would have built more? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that would have been too much. Yeah, I don't know if I need that. Well, he could have been—he could have been the first merchant at the fucking uh, at, at the bridge. Maybe if you just him. seen him. Yeah, because like, Rand keeps saying You're right. he it looks familiar. A... And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would have liked there just to be visual confirmation earlier. But what bothers me is that later, someone gets killed by lightning. We know that, mm-hmm. and we know presumably that it's Howl Goad for, uh, for the simple fact that yeah, I'm pretty sure he's in his fucking dream later. Yeah, which is a real dream. So Samuel Hake is the person who, again later, is you know shaking his hands at him. I would have loved more of this fucking ominous shit, like something with Samuel Hake. 
That bothers later? me. Yeah, later. Just, I don't know. We heard about a fucking rape going on at Goddamn uh, Kings. <laughs> male or, probably male. Just like way later when like Elaine's taking the throne. Yeah. And just like a weird offshoot comment about the Four Kings and a re- weird creepy end. The, the next couple of chapters have people who come and go like, one of these dudes is in book we 13. We see all this, we mentioned, uh, by the way, old prop as I was, as we mentioned this then, we mentioned this 10 years ago, but I'll mention it again. Like, you see all of these people that they see over these travels later, except for Sam Lake. Yeah. But you see Almond Bunt later, you see uh, Hyrule Kinch I'm later. Sure. I'm assuming that Hake and Jack and Trom are dead. But no, I kind of assumed that as well. I assumed it too until I remember the last scene of this when is someone when like you know shaking his fist out at the fucking window. What's it's gotta that? be. It's gotta be. Hank. Also, yeah. into that that it might be his imagination. That's true because later on he does have some pretty hyper real. Uh, but not yet. Right now, no, he's that, high as no, shit. No, he's described as like somebody in the dark, and he's not actually sure that's a real thing, or is that actually definitely happening? Yeah, can I can't remember. No, give me. A, I, I don't know either, Tom. I believe it's pretty. <clears throat> Hold on. Well, if you believe it to be so, then uh, it must be true. Uh, I mean, anybody could be shaking their fist. It could be one of the waitresses that's just like, oh, I don't know, I you'll you never rape me again it. and punch me in the How face. How am I going to get paid now? You killed my rapist boss. Light yeah, silhouette. It, maybe it's one of the tavern wenches and they're just like, yeah, all the fucking rapists are dead. You guys rock. So it says, lightning silhouette of the figure of a man at the back of the end. A man shaking his fist at them or the sky. Goat or Hake, he did not know, but either one was as bad as the other. Well, so maybe it's, there you go. Maybe it's a, sh- maybe it's a shaman. Well, assuming that sentence is accurate, it's then it's be not Goat, Hake. and that must be Hake. So Samuel Hake lived through that. Yeah. yeah. Well, so let's finish the chapter out. Uh, All right, so here's what happens. Uh, Rand channels lightning. <laughs> Yeah. Blasts a big ass hole in the wall, and then Matt stands up and goes, What a hole! <laughs> <laughs> and then they escape into the dark. That's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, while we're talking while we're talking about what a hole, two days ago I was so bored from a week and a half cooped up in the house, I got in the shower and then I did a Macaulay Tolkien. And just like I shaved clean for the first time in like two years and then like slicked all my hair back and I was like, Woo! Just having a good time. Yeah. I am not going to trim my beard until I go back to work. Did you put, like, an enormous towel on so you looked like an eight-year-old boy wearing a grown man's towel? No, I did not do that. <laughs> All right. But I had an eight-year-old's towel because I fucking ran. <laughs> yeah, I know you're talking about. You put a hand towel around your body. <laughs> the opposite of that. Um... Yeah, I mean, like, there's... There's a lot of cool things to be said about this scene and what's happening, but... It's a very like to his. I did sum it up really well. <laughs> what, I agree. Like, what's fascinating about it is that it, it's Rand's. What is it? His third time channeling. I think it's his third time channeling. Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. And so that's obviously very important for the next chapters as far as what it fucks him with, and it shows how fucking strong he is. What is it fucking with? Wait, it just he can't fucking walk. The flute. Through. Yeah, the flute. But also, oh, I forgot the fact that personally when we read it last time. Yeah. I always forget that there's not just oh, oh, Go it, doesn't just have people behind. Yeah, him. I do have something to say about Go. Go's also got people outside the fucking inn. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, so he's got like so a was that dozen Trollocs, people. Though? No, it's it. They're the people. He, wasn't he hiding them in the carriages or whatever? Yes, he. I don't think they're Trollocs because otherwise we would have heard of it. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. But it, I mean, that's not a bad question, really. I wonder if it was Trollocs. I feel like they would see a bunch of dead Trollocs when they're running out. Yeah, that's probably true. Even uh, though Rand, Matt was blind, I feel like Rand would be like, "That's clearly not a human." Yeah, because Rand's dead on the ground, high on having channel right. <laughs> true. Yeah. So, but he's I, probably still not. He's probably not holding the one power at the time, so his vision's probably not enhanced. But I think he would be able to tell agreed. the difference between a <clears throat> random guy like in the street or something knocked over from the lightning versus a trollic. To me, this is, and maybe because we can't stop fucking joking about it, you, you know, sexist dicks. Uh-huh. This is one of the most important chapters, though, the entire fucking book. Like, as far as, like, in the middle formative period. Sure. Like, it kind of solidifies. Especially on a first read, because this is the first chapter where it's very clear that Shit's either hard. Rand or Matt is doing something. Obviously Rand. Yeah. I think but it's like, very, very clear it's Rand. 
Well, yeah, well, you know what I'm saying. Like, I mean, you could be naive with it, I suppose, if you want to. Naive's back in Whitebridge. Well, uh, that's why I'm, yeah. Well, she's not there anymore. I don't know. Of course, they're, 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 they're traveling. But, uh, <laughs> no, I, I agree with you 100% that, like, this is a further kind of like, this is a more obvious piece that says, holy so shit. This something we something. talked about in the old podcast episode the that wasn't us being stupid. Oh, we should start calling it that. The Old Testament versus the New Testament. <laughs> That's, New I, don't, Testament's, I don't hate that at all. New Testament's bigger. I mean, we are very yeah. godlike yeah. beings, you know, just in general. I honestly don't hate that either. <laughs> so one of the things we talked about was Goad, when he shoves the door like an inch or two open and he's talking to them. Yeah. He's like, I can feel it coming off of you in waves, like you're like pulling at me kind of thing. And that's the dagger. Yeah, so that's what I thought on this read as well. I thought it was dagger. But what we said before was that, like, the Dark One has many hounds. Patton Fane's just one of them. Maybe he's just, like... Tom, you had even said, like, he's kind of like a 5% of P- what Patton Fane is. Like, he has, like, God, a I piece. <laughs> no, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's a logical way. I don't... No, but listening to us talk about it before, just now, I was like, that's pretty fucking logical. That's just not... Just real quick. A I've, dumb thing to say. I agree with you, Joe. I just love Tom always just like... Just like, oh, I can't fucking yeah, believe we said that. No, it's well, the dagger, right? He's over right here where, like, kids say the damnedest things. Yeah, uh, basically. <laughs> I mean, the, so we had we said something... Were in I don't know, man. That one isn't as dumb as I would I would say. Like, basically, he does have a thousand hounds out. They're all looking for Rand right now. And there's also a lot of questions of kind of why Goad seems almost... But he, whatever he can feel coming off of them in waves, though, that's the dagger. Like, it's, he can sense the evil. 25% of our lives ago. Fuck. Uh, well, More. you know, also, you're old, so for me, it's only uh, 30%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's way more percent. It's more for you, idiot. Yeah, I know. It's less for me, actually. But yeah, that's what makes us better than you. That's why I was joking about the fact that 10 years is... Chapter. All right, chapter 33. The dark waits. Tom, you want to hit it? It's, uh... uh it's a traveling montage, and we run into a couple of dark friends. Man, that was... I mean, I, I don't have my notes in front of me, but my notes were very concise as in terms of, like, let me do a quick recap, and then I'll deep dive. And his his concise notes were even better than mine. Yeah, I mean the, mo- the most interesting part <laughs> of this is what Donna already brought up <laughs> is that uh, both both these dark friends show up later and play like significant roles. I and, oh, and that's stained. I love her. That's why I'm annoyed by the fact that no one sees Hake later because clearly. But he's, he's not a dark friend. He's just a rapist. But no one sees a rapist later. We see this motherfucker. We see plenty of rapists later. There's a shitload of rape later. Name yeah, one. Are, you, are you forgetting about Elaine's rapist? I, I know. Well, actually. he's not a rapist. He's an opportunist uh, fucker. He, no, he's, oh, he's clear. No, he's rapist. absolutely a rapist. Of course, he's a goddamn <laughs> 1, rapist. One thousand percent. Yeah. But on the other hand, he was told to be. I mean, he basically claims to be the greatest rapist of all time. <laughs> Do you know who it actually is? Doyle Millar? Doyle Millar. He's the, he's the best. They're actually going to make a movie about him starring Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Hugh Jackman. Is that a compliment? Yeah, it's the greatest rapist. It's all about the circus. <laughs> it's a musical. He it's goes musical from town horror. to town. Yeah. <laughs> He's got these fingers. No one can quite keep a beat on this rapist because he keeps traveling. <laughs> He's got these fingers. Three. Of Maybe them. it's connected to the circus. Get all the way through me. I did not. My like God, it. Bill, you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, I think you had great. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about PT Barnum? Yeah. All right, so what do we got? Do you want to jump to the uh, to the two dark friends, or do you want to? Talk oh, about the, so the I, dream? Now I remember where I was going. Uh, 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 the only one, t- the only reason. Oh, this is my notes, Tom. That went a little bit beyond yours. Rand gets a sunburn. I thought that was very important. Other than that, <laughs> pale ass far boy in your winter. <laughs> no, so if one of the things that's important to remember is that earlier on, there was a chapter. There was a a uh, little piece about how they got a scarf from someone so all these chapters are weirdly yeah, they keep getting scarves well no it's the same scarf no they get two <coughs> more scarves later there's, there's, there's a two whole, scarves out of his pocket those two scarves are the same scarves from earlier this is all told in a flashback which has a flashback in it 
Oh yeah, that it, is confusing. It, this chapter it, was very it, confusing. It can be confusing. Yeah. So this is actually, and I, if I remember correctly, Jordan said he would take two things back. One, pretty much the entirety of book ten because the way it went backwards, and two. This, because similar to book 10, which he somehow did later on on a huge or big uh, a, scale, a larger scale, he went backwards and had shit in the middle of it, in which backwards again. Yeah, I always think uh, Alman Bunt and Master Kinch are the same person, even on like my billionth reread of this book. It Completely doesn't agree with you. help that there's Almond Bunt... There's well, it's like, weird because Hi- Hiram Kinch picks them up in the beginning of this chapter and then he or drops, drops them off, off and then he picks them up at the end of the chapter and you're like, this is very confusing. And there's another guy, too, whose name I've got written down somewhere. Uh, not Almond Bunt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's his name, not Almond Bunt. It, no, Almond. He's... Uh, <laughs> he's... <laughs> nothing. Alpert Mull. I was going to make... A really dumb joke. <laughs> so it's Alpert Mole is the other one. So there's like Al- Almond Butt. Two le- A, two letters. Wait, A Alpert two- Mole? Yeah, uh, Alpert Mole. <laughs> I can't believe we're focusing on this. There's a lot of farmers. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Alpert Mole. Mounds got <laughs> no nuts. Almond Bunt does. Let's talk about Pater. So anyway, they pass. Well, let's get to it. So I yeah. really like Painter. I do enjoy. I mean, in terms of a dark friend, I like this scene. Love, it's kind of. I love it's kind of cool. because he's he put in more energy than anybody I think that I know trying to kill more Jews. He, he does. He walked and right I, up to and them. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> he walked right up to them. It was like, hey, uh, you get you get the stuff, and they're like, what? <laughs> it's like, oh shit! <laughs> Seriously, it's like, can, oh can shit! I, you're the guys. Can I sit down? I mean, you're the guy. <laughs> It's so fucking weird and bizarre, and he's just like, I, like the this whole scenario. Like, if, I feel like at this point in time, had they not run into this inept idiot, they would have been fucked. Yeah, this guy, like he, but for whatever reason, it's just like they basically met themselves, but as a dark friend. It's like this country bumpkin <laughs> idiot that's just like, oh, uh, hey, hey, guys, you get down with Satan. You're you're arrested. <laughs> arrested by who? I no, I'm not a dark friend. Do you guys like metal different? music? <laughs> Do you like metal? Do you like, I don't know, getting high? <laughs> Do you Sickness. like... Do you like burning incense? Can I touch your penises? I, I don't know. I, something about this whole scene just, like... It's it's weird. It's scary because it keeps them running, but at the same time, well, it's refreshing because I mean, it's so, like, hilarious how that's bad he is at being a dark friend, I guess. <laughs> He's wonderful. I, mean, I don't know. I, I feel like that's the whole point of the chapter is between him and then the nice lady, like, they realize that, like, literally anyone could be a dark friend and that's what gets them to Cayman for the most part. Well, there's a few other I things think that's pretty, That's pretty good con- con- uh, r- summation of what's going on. I think, I think it, there's a few questions, though. Like, they'd they're been with... afraid of Faith and Trollocs, but they hadn't... Yeah, they well, hadn't considered the human they aspect. They hadn't taken it so seriously so far until this point. I, I, and I think that's a that's a very valid point. And even to the point where this makes them paranoid, but their paranoia is what keeps them alive later. Yeah, ironically, almost. Matt having this dagger is perfect. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'd just be like, let's just fucking go to an inn. I want to I fuck another haystack. Yeah. Are you kidding? Matt having the dagger is perfect. It got them, it got, it, it saved the world. Oh, that's what I'm saying. So, like, well, real it quick, literally though. literally saves them from Millie's skein. Skank. But real quick, though. So, we talked briefly about Haim Kim- Kinnich. Did he kind of come out saying he had a bunch of STDs is really the only note I've got before this. I realized that we skipped over it. I oh, yeah. He's, 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 he's had so many diseases. He keeps talking about how... He's had like, so many diseases, Jono, and he's gotten all over all of them. Him and his wife. He's like, my wife and I, we've had everything you've ever heard of. Like, we had it together. Yeah, uh, and we're good to go. Like, we've whatever had Whatever you got, yeah. I've had and gotten rid of. <laughs> also... <laughs> also, you're way past incubation stereo yeah. <laughs> stages, so yeah. I'm fine. Yeah, it's like, you can fuck whatever holy you want. Shit. Man. That is, like, that's my note, was just like, holy shit, STD. Uh, and yeah, I, Kinch, Kinch has taken in every orifice. <laughs> and out. What? Yeah. Out of us? Is that what you said? Out of us, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, though, we missed the, uh, the dream. 
of you know goat being dead and burned and so that was awesome yeah and it's a cool scene and I don't also, know how much I have to say about it other than it's another Rand dream with Bela Gazelbazman and another piece though where Balzaman says the eye of the world will not serve you this is directly to Rand now mm-hmm. and so like things again this guy is the well worst. he's still talking to Matt also because Matt wakes up with his eyes punched out or whatever <laughs> well Matt's eyes were already fucked up because of the lightning no, I know, but in the dream that same night, <laughs> he wakes up with his eyes ripped out, and he goes, he took my eyes, and he's freaking out. My point being is, Balazabazman doesn't know if it's Rand or Matt yet. I said it right, it's right. Why is that not going thing? <laughs> May, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, All I'm saying is, Matt and Rand both woke up from dreams. They were different. They weren't both rats curling their, and breaking their backs, but they were different, but it was still the same effect. Like, he doesn't know which one it is yet, still. Uh, so, I've got he another... He thinks it's one of the two of them, for sure. Agreed. And I've got, I've got a question here. And I, I, I've thought about it more, and I, I'm not sure, but do you, like, I think that Rand starts to realize what that he can channel here. Because Rand starts talking about, like, like you know... When he's talking with Matt, right after we he wakes up here, he's like, "You're all right. He can't hurt us." And then he's like, "He can't hurt us." He whispers, and he wish he's like, "What protects you makes you vulnerable," which is what uh, Balsamon has said to him. Yeah, yeah. And, and he goes, "I am going mad." So he's got to. He's questioning. What, uh, I don't think so, but I, he's like, well, "What does that mean? What protects you makes you like, makes you vulnerable?" I don't think he knows either. I think he's starting to question. I mean, he's been saved weirdly lately. I think what Jono was saying has weight, and here's why. Because if you backtrack to the goad conversation with Rand and Matt, what's going on in Rand's head when he's like, I can feel it all coming off you guys in waves. I know it's you, blah, blah, blah. Like, Rand, in his own mind, is like, well, it can't be Matt. So something's wrong with me. Like, he, he's very, I don't know, selfish in terms of being, like, I don't think, who I don't is responsible. I don't think he thinks he can channel. He, he suspected it's him the second that Tan said he wasn't. Right, uh, so that's been son, building basically. this entire time. And I think that, like, every instance of, like, now Perrin's not around. So it's not Perrin. It must be me or Matt. Now, clearly, Matt's around, but I don't think it's Matt. I think it's me. I, and it's I more and he, more... I think he, I think he thinks that he's the one that they're after. I don't think he thinks he can channel. But what would make him... Well, I don't know if it's him going like, I think I can channel. Literally, specifically. I think it's more like... I think he's I worried know. he can channel. I think he's worried he can channel because he talks about... The I fact think he's kind of worried he can channel. Earlier, he, he says, is it the light that just... I think he's me? worried it's him. But when you say he's worried that it's him... He's worried that it's him that can channel. It, You're just not saying the end of the sentence. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, guys are gonna, you guys are gonna sound like such idiots when we do the re 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 podcast. <laughs> ten years from, from now? now? I can, Shit, you're right. <laughs> odds are it won't even be ten. It'll be twelve years from now. And you know what? I mean, we're not even gonna finish this one until seven years from now. Yeah, we'll have Parkinson's. We don't remember <laughs> shit. You know what? By the time we do this a third time. We won't remember anything because we're alcoholics. So <laughs> we it'll did. be like the first time again. Yeah, it'll be Joe, Tom, and... Oh, I'm sorry. Tom's dead. Jono. Also, you know what? Jono died in a car crash. It'll, it'll just be, be two, Joe. It'll be two of us and then a replacement for whoever died from the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I like the idea of We're laughing, but that's not funny. Just Joe alone Wait, in the box. Is. We're just like fake me and you. Tom and I are dead. <laughs> Listen, Tom's... He's going to die tomorrow, John. I don't know if you knew that. It's not a surprise. His body was totally unhappy about him running. Like, what the fuck do you think this is, man? <laughs> we were ready to be a fucking fallout shelter of alcoholism. And, Jono, if you died in a car accident, I'd, like, reanimate your brain so, like, you could just continue to, like, help me out. So it's going to be a head in a jar like a Futurama? Yes, exactly. It's <laughs> exactly true. Yeah. Well, here's the newest survived. dick I've already, joke. I've already, I've already survived the coronavirus, guys. I'm good to go. <laughs> and if my daughter never listens to these episodes... Fuck, she probably She'll will. be the third, because she won't understand how horrible of a person I am. <laughs> She's like, I think Samuel Hake seems like he's pressuring into sex. <laughs> Just like the guys in my seventh grade class. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what? Who's 
doing? Joe's gonna throw his shit down. It's like, uh, like who is it? Is it your teacher? Is it your teacher? He was skinny. I could tell he was a creepy rapist because he's a skinny gym teacher. <laughs> No, like the video we watched at class. Oh, never oh, mind. Oh, the video. Good. Right. I'm glad oh. you guys watched that. <sighs> yes, the video. That was what that was about, though, right? Yeah, the video. <laughs> so we did that in Pater. Yeah. How do you pronounce that? Do you just say Peter? No, Pater. I say Pater. Hey, Pater. I call um, it Pater. Uh, do, we want to talk about, do we want to talk about the smoking poison knife or anything, or... No, that's just, I mean, I only in the sense to mention it, which you just did, but it, yeah, it's it's horrifying. <laughs> like, 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 holy no shit. friend or anybody else has any weapon, anything like this in any other book. I think it's just a, I don't know, maybe it is something that's more like a, akin to like a midril sword or something that like forged in fucking Thakandar or something. Wait, I thought, are, are we doing Patient? Why are we having to go Skane? Man, we're just jumping around. Yeah, let's talk about Pater first. Oh, okay. I we did. Love the fact that this guy. I'm kind of with Tom here. We did. Scares Broodman. That's it. Yeah, that's it. All right, moving on to Millie's game. Even that, I'm just, I'm mostly just curious about the knife. We don't see something like this again, right? No, we don't. No, a knife randomly hitting a board and then starting to smoke and like. No, we like we, it's fucking. Yeah, we literally have no experience. made in hell. No, no, we don't really. <laughs> And now that, that, I, I've Which is bizarre. I, I don't know. Uh, do you think if Matt stabbed the Shattered Logoth dagger into a wall, it would start to burn? No, I don't. I well, feel like it would just be normal. Neither do I. I wonder I, what I, happens. I think it would take over the whole building, and then you'd have a barn that had, like, a Venom <laughs> skin on it, and it would fight Spider-Man. <laughs> it's really angry. I love that idea. <laughs> I, what I always wonder is, like, did that... Did they dropping it into a bottle of water or a bucket of water really stop it, or did it slowly just make the bottle like the thing they just turn the water into acid? Yeah, <laughs> and then it just kept slowly just fucking like just going down into the earth. It's like a fucking like just weird sank to the center of the earth. Yeah, and now that earthquake. Her, that like gives her a reason to come back, like to course correct on her having that knife. Is like, well, we've got to make her like someone that was an important dart for it. Uh, yeah, I, I kind and of agree with that. Yeah. It, it very <laughs> well may back. have been the reasoning Peter behind it. back is just like, what the fuck? Well, well here's the thing, was though. Was all, uh, all I was trying to say is, like, there's a, I mean, who the fuck knows? Maybe it's a dagger that uh, some midral was like, stab him with this. <laughs> you know, and it was fucking from, like, Thakandar or something. Like, I don't know. It was here. I don't know, but there's dark friends. Maybe it's more than just a poison knife, the is all I'm saying. What did you say, Tom? There's dark friends everywhere, but she's the one that gets the magic knife just in case she might happen to run into them. I think they're... I think she the entire point of, point of these chapters is that it's honing in on them. So it's very possible that, well, I like... I get all that. Never mind. We don't have to... No, no, but just, Tom, just Tom to your point, though... i and how she got it. No, Tom, Tom I think you've, you're, you're actually on, on a... Well, I mean, I'm what off if, in wild theory land right now, but I'm just saying it's based on the idea well, that, like, hold, hold maybe on. they're honing in. Well, I think ahead, Tom's on a point, though, is yeah. that we see her, she leads a circle in Abu Dhar soon. Yeah. Like, like, not soon, soon, but, you know, nine months from now, or 12, yeah. uh, 15 months from now. And so she's in charge of an entire circle who actually reports to Jacob Carradine, <laughs> who is a very high influential dark friend. Yeah, and, and even while she's reporting to him, she's after. in contention to be in charge over him. Exactly. Not long after, she's in charge of Aes Sedai. And then not and long Andor. after that, she's murdered. Well, yeah. Very that gruesomely. Happens. Yeah, if that happens. But she gets yeah, to kill I mean, At this point, she, she's a dark friend of high standing. Exactly. So, yeah. maybe it is a kind of... Yeah, she's like the man called Boris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, technically, that's the person she is. I know, that's killed. what I'm talking about. <laughs> I do love that. She's probably there. She's probably at that party. Great party. Oh, for sure she's at that party. You know what she's called? Chick called bitch. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. First of anyway. all, I thought you were going to go with the skank joke you've been saying this entire time. So when you said bitch, I was like, what? Really? You well, didn't she, even try. She, she seems kind of bitchy. Johnny, you didn't even try. Yeah, well, it could have been like a chick called fox cunt. Because <laughs> she's kind of foxy faces. <laughs> Who knows what her pussy looks like. I think you're thinking of Chesmol. No, they call her fox face here. Anyway, uh, yeah, crazy so dagger. We, it's poisoned. <laughs> Chris, what yeah, call my I dick? I, I think we've done it. <laughs> yeah, we did it. So Matt, I, the the entire scene unfolding is amazing. In only only in and of itself that Matt just like somehow 
is so fucking psychotically paranoid that he like so Thank <laughs> God. whips his hand out. No one else is ready to murder someone. Yeah, like holy shit, like how crazy are you? He's like, everyone's out to get us. And Rand's like, no, they're not. Calm down, Matt. And he's like, this. And then just that woman moves her hand. And he's like, she's got a knife. <laughs> and weirdly, she does. It's like the Leslie Nielsen thing. Make it gone. Sweet. It's bubble gum, and he starts shooting at people. Yeah. Uh, but uh, by the way, but this time he's right. In my notes, the dagger's name is Tom. What? Because it's smoking all the time. Oh, God. <laughs> That's what I've got. Is this dagger Tom? Tom's got us on mute. And he's so annoyed. So, yeah. Chapter 34. The Last Village. The Last Village. Sounds... This is a... Uh, simultaneously travel ominous. travel montage... A fade conversation. We finally get almond bun. There's some hallucinations, and then we're okay. Finally get almond bun. We've had. We've been holding out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> holding out of that almond bun. So this is a weird reversal from the last chapter because I said something along the lines of more travel. I mean, it's and then I just right. wrote, <laughs> and then I think I just wrote they get to came one. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Jono, deep dive us. Tom, question well, for you. I mean, the, conver- the conversation with the Fade is the most interesting, and then I... I think it's really what, cool. I was just looking through the chapters to do notes, like, real quick. So yeah. I don't know if the hallucinations were interesting or not, so... Let's do the Fade, and then let's let Jono tell us about these hallucinations. Well, let's start before that. Let's talk about how... <laughs> You're the fucking worst. But this is an important... I don't care about traveling. <laughs> let's... Not, they're gonna be in the TV show. I just fucking love John. I mean, like, let's start before that. <laughs> <laughs> the most classic fucking kind of thing to say. How bad do these dudes smell? <laughs> literally what I want to talk about. What are you talking about? They had, they've had 18 showers out in the rain. They're cleaner than half the people they're around. They have to smell awful. They're Everybody sl- else does too. They don't have showers. That's kind of what I'm saying. They've been taking nature showers for like they weeks on They don't have deodorant either. Wait, what? Sure they do. <laughs> it's called... Wait, wait, did they it's have called, deodorant? Arm and Hammer. Age of, it's called Age of Le- Legend Spice. You owe me a great job. And when you're done, it's, when it's gone, you're done. And when it's gone, other side. <laughs> Turn it over. <laughs> Just like a woman. Uh, so the roads are packed now. It's it, They use all the natural ingredients, Tom, that, uh, that don't work. <laughs> John is really going to walk us through the travel. <laughs> I'm just it. fascinated by the fact that we, we're finally to the part where there's just, you know, the, it, the roads are really packed. So instead of what was like their plan of let's be the only motherfuckers playing uh, flute and juggling together. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, like, we're actually one of a thousand people walking down the road. Like, oh, all of a sudden. Simultaneously helpful, simultaneously not helpful. Yeah, but at the same time. Because everyone hates all the travelers, so they're pissed off about it. And then at the same time, they're blending into the crowd, so it's working to their favor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like how they wake up in that haystack and they're like, hey, where are you going? He's like, going to see the Dragon Reborn, bro, just like you. <laughs> He's like, what? Are we? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, that's what we're doing. Like, no, no, we're uh, trying We're to... not running for our lives. I am the dragon. Nope, that's not right. No, that's not right either. Um, Would you go to see Logan? I mean, look, in concert? Are you kidding? Yeah, I, I would go lo- see Logan at Camelin. Yeah, yeah. He's just I mean, like, but it's not he like sells out that on the highway. Like, you got to give up your life. Yeah. Well, I Do mean, you? briefly. It's only three months. I mean, what's a, like what's an extended leave of absence, <laughs> absence from sheep herding look like? <laughs> it's like weird Burning Man because they literally <laughs> burned the guy. Your dad is gonna be really bad. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, and, that, and then you come back and all the sheep are still there. Yeah, it's the same sheep. Your dad yells at you for a week because <sighs> you know, like he had to do it by himself or he had to hire someone. Unless his dad was. Well, you don't have an allowance for a week. month. <laughs> well, what? You're not gonna get this fur, fur? from sheep from shearing it. So, fuck. You would be the saddest old man at the tavern telling everybody how you went to see low game. <laughs> no, I'd be like, 
I'd be like the sheep herder that came back to town and was like, <laughs> check out what I just did. Saw the biggest, zero. greatest city in the world. Fuck Tarvalon. Fuck Gillian. <laughs> that is what Alvin Bot does later in this chapter. He's just kind of like, you know what? I've never seen anyone. I love, I love how you pointed that out as if Joe wasn't doing that on purpose. <laughs> That's, thank you, Tom. <laughs> hey, that is what Alvin's son did. Hey, and he would have gotten away with it too, for those meddling kids. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is uh, it's interesting. Yep. So a- as Tom was uh, for some reason trying to jump the gun on without listening to the travel montage jokes, uh, random at fa- come to this village and they find. What about getting whipped in the head? Oh yeah, by the oh, you want to talk about what about, about a spear? Let's butt? talk God about how it, weird it is. What about a spear butt to the head? <laughs> that these merchants somehow get to fucking just beat the shit out of people. Those because they're peasantine, T- Jono. Yeah, what are, the, what are they gonna do about it? <laughs> There's it's, it's an empire. empire. The queen's fucking guards moving back and forth here. The queen's guards don't give a fuck. Andor is the only town. I sound like so weird. Like the only city, only country. That In actually, the Age of Legends, there's a meme where it's the Queen's Guard don't give a fuck, and it's it's like it's just like Honey Badger. <laughs> I shouldn't have laughed at that. That made me sad. That was a dozen years old. I love it. <laughs> uh, but uh, like, like listen, and, if and the Honey Badger meme wasn't still relevant, then you know I'd agree with you. But it is. Andor is the Andor. only fucking country Andor. where they actually don't have don't. peasants, really. Well, maybe not the only country, but they have a... Oh, they have tons of peasants. What legitimate middle class. It's not serfs. It's peasants. <laughs> You're correct. I apologize. It's yeah, peasants, peasants versus serfs. Yeah, so they are that. middle class fucking people who have rights and shit like that. All the, all the peasants go to the palace once a month to get the queen's blessing. Okay. The peasantines? <laughs> Was, was waiting for a second part of that. That's it. I don't have no. anything else. Oh, That's it. <laughs> hooray! <laughs> uh, so anyway, they get to the town, and uh, our friend <laughs> Royman Holden, who the owner of the inn, oh, the, the innkeeper. innkeeper. Yeah, the innkeeper. Oh, you mean the dark friend that's talking to a midral? Well, you don't know he's a dark friend. Oh, shut the fuck up. He's, he's got a clear. friend who may or may not be a mirror Come the fuck on. He's, he's hanging out in a dark alleyway with a fade. Not a dark like alleyway. he doesn't know. A lit alleyway next to a dark alleyway. So, something else we definitely don't see much more of is just a random guy having a conversation with a fade. I actually kind of I like it. that for this exact reason. Yeah, I feel like that should be more there. Because like, you know how, like, later, later on when they're in the Borderlands... Borderlands. They do this thing where they're like, oh, we have laws against putting your hoods up and stuff like that. Yeah. But you never really see, like, Midral just like, trying to blend in. It's it's just kind of obvious it's to everyone that they're Midral. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, this is kind of one of the only instances of, like, there's a Midral around the town. I mean, we have Whitebridge a little bit. But there's, like, this is the only instance of, like, hey, there's a Midral hanging out. Hey, you got strange friends there, innkeeper. And he's like, oh, well, fuck you. Fuck you, cart guy. Tom. You know, kind of thing. And, like, I kind of love it, though. Tom, I can totally how imagine. Like, oh, I can totally. How, you how, go. Low on the, how low on the fade totem pole do you have to be to be the one that has to go talk to an innkeeper? Oh, very of, low. Great question. Open. Great. Very low. They're like, oh, we're definitely sending Johnny to do this job. Damn it. Because I would, assume, I would assume that a single fate would probably wait out that entire village if you really wanted to. No, what's the, people, what's the, the, people what's that the fucking away. fade that's like the like the mouth of Sauron? <laughs> with, oh, Shadar Haran. Yeah, Shadar Haran. He's not doing that. He's the uh, that's the antithesis yeah. to this. Yeah, <laughs> he's what's the, what's he's the, the pinnacle of fade, where he's like the the dark one embodied. <laughs> And then the other Midral are like, ah, oh, man, one day. It's probably the same dude. One day I'll be Shadar that guy. Logos. Like, like the guys are like, like <laughs> one the, day I'll be that guy. He's pretty. Oh, who is it? Who he is gets to rape. He gets to rape so with much. The glasses. What did you say, Tom? Who's Dalinar's son with the glasses? Oh, Renarin? Renarin. Yeah, that is the, the, the fate is, that fate is Renarin. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, there's that's no, what we're saying. He's the opposite of the favorite son. Tom, what I'm thinking of... There's no other fate in existence that's going to walk near a human and not just cut it into pieces. And this one's just like, I'll go talk to him. All right. <laughs> <laughs> pass of this bitch. He's probably the one that get, had to give his dagger to Millie Skank. <laughs> he's only got, instead of a full sword, he's just got like a six-inch blade. 
she's like, how am I going to kill these guys? And like, He's Billy, like, all right, take my sword. And she's like, this isn't a it's sword, it's like a knife. dagger. What's wrong with you, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> this is no longer sword they would give me. <laughs> <laughs> fucking loser fade. I fucking love this idea. This is almost as good as the Midrill Butler. Hey, same guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mitchell Butler's way up there on the total pole. He's probably like in the middle. He's in the middle somewhere. Tom, I keep thinking about the idea of like, you know, you, there's just a weird montage in like a like a borderland city. Like they're in uh, like Faldera, and like they find, like, they come across like a talk like where like everyone's got their hoods down, and it's just a guy talking to a slug faced man. It's just like, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on one second. Can you pull your hood down all the way? It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's like, How about this? <laughs> have you seen anyone? Have you seen this, boys? <laughs> I don't think you're what you look like. I, you know, you know what I think the you know what I think the midril need is those those glasses that have like fake eyes on them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're gonna do that. Let's do the nose and the mustache too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, those eyes—the the ones that are like the eyes that look like you're awake when you're sleeping. Yeah, no, but Tom's right though. We can't all look like that. So, all right, the, some of them have a nose and mustache. Some of them have different <laughs> mustaches because the just, Dark Lord just is paint, brilliant. Just paint, just paint eyes on the eyes. What if a fucking mural <laughs> took off his hood? Hold on, hold on, in hold on, hold on. Listen to Tom's idea. Tom's idea is the fact that they actually are all just facial, like feature. So just paint fake eyes on to it. It's like uh, it's like Uno's eye patch. Yeah, like. <laughs> the Uno's a fucking half dark one. They're half fucking half mirror draw. Who knew? Not, it's not just, a, it's just a bunch of makeup artists. Like, and Thakandar is like Thakandar is half blacksmiths making awesome swords for middles to kill people. The other half makeup artists, <laughs> and they're they're just painting pe- the middles faces up to make it look like people. They walk into no, town. No. That guy hasn't would, blinked. No, he's fine. Don't worry. I, seen, I, I know he's I would, really bug-eyed and weird, but. <laughs> I want to see the teenage midrall in high school where uh, a couple of the girls like try to get him ready for a party so they paint his face up so it has eyeballs and stuff. And maybe he wears something besides black. And it turns out he was handsome all along. I love this oh, idea. Yeah. Not, like, not another teenage movie. You should see midrall prom. There are some angry fucking girls there. Like, I, I Holy tell you. shit. <laughs> We got off anyway, on a hilarious tangent, and I'm really mad we have more to discuss. So let's do that so we yeah, get back to yeah. jokes. The, the, point, the point of this is that the mirror draw that had to talk to the farmer was definitely the nerd in high school. Oh, totally nerd. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so I do love the fact that after he slinks away without his uh, cloak moving, which, you know, thanks for mm-hmm. the talking point. Uh, what, what's our uh, Almond Buck's the one who's talking to him. Yeah, I I don't remember liking him so much. I do, but I when I, when you see him again way later on when Rand is Jesus. Whoa! And yes. he's like, oh hey, your apples <laughs> like, are failing. Like How about they're full of apples? What's that, Tom? Nothing. Never mind. Oh yeah, but he's seen again as Joe was saying, book thirteen. Is it thirteen or fourteen? Either way, uh, I think it's it's fourteen. Uh, right. He walks past this guy's dying I, apple orchard and just like, well, it can't be fourteen because we knew be about it. It's, we knew about it ten years ago, so it's gotta be thirteen. Is, by the way, this mirror girl, this is the same one that uh, had to go see Rand in a hallway. Yeah, and in Barillon, but wasn't allowed to kill him. <laughs> and then he's the same one that got into a fight with the Gleam and it lost. Yeah, <laughs> it's just not your month. Yeah. yeah, and he's the same one that rode up and down the road. Like I know they're here somewhere. And what we don't, and what <laughs> we, one, and what we didn't know is that if Almond Bun had like held up a lantern and shone light into that dark alleyway, he would have been wearing uh, glasses that looked like eyes. <laughs> Here, the problem is, the guy was blind. He had I'm really wide thick awake. glasses. I'm wide awake. Um, <laughs> oh, poor Bill. No, Billy. it's John. Poor it was thirteen because draw. in thirteen, Rand is simultaneously Jesus Rand, but also parents Shh. back in time. Yeah. So it, it's the timeline's all fucked up. Yeah. So like that makes in, the, sense cause... in the beginning of thirteen, he's giving apples to Almond Bun and being Jesus Rand, but then simultaneously, Parent is like up on Dragon Mount and like Parent and Rand is like they're like, you know, Jesus Rand turning into Jesus Rand. Oh. Anyway. Um, 
Innkeeper. So let's see. By the way, this Innkeeper Holdwin guy, awful liar. Is it? My, uh... Well, what dark friend's a good liar, Jono? It's obvious to me. I scroll uh, Dragon's Fangs on lots of people's doorways. I'll tell you who's a good liar. Our favorite goddamn woman rapist. Uh... <laughs> Well, I mean, male what? rapist would obviously be Hake. Not a very good liar. Yeah, no, it's clear. It's evident. It's written all over his face what he wants to yeah. do. <laughs> well, he keeps staring at my sword and my flute and then just saying, like, I want to suck on all those. Yeah. He's not... It's 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 right there out in the open. Right there. Uh, but no, but... Um, Rafe? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Uh, but, uh... What's his name? David Hanlon. That, mm. that, that's a good rapist. I the people. greatest rapist. Yeah. You mean Doyle and Millar. Yeah, Doyle and Millar. Uh, both of them. I wish uh, they were the David guy. Hanlon's his, his, uh, his fake name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, where was I going? Oh, but anyway, so <laughs> this guy's a bad liar, I suppose, the others. And then he's just kind of like, my friend uh, had a sword stolen, and so he'll pay... Uh, uh, hundreds uh, of hundred, fucking hundred, do- oh, yeah. hundred gold crowns. Yeah, which for seems- both of their heads and more for the sword. <laughs> the guy's like, "What about the sword?" He's like, "Well, the sword would be nice too." He's like, "Isn't that what he's looking for?" He's like, "Fuck you, man! You making fun of me? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you questioning me? Yeah, going to Camelot in the middle of the night. You know what's out there? Yeah. Mildred. I mean, I don't know that. Uh, you're gonna die mm. because I want the Mildred to kill you. But I don't clearly, know that's that. actually not a problem because. Apparently, Almond Bunt drives them all the way to Camlin in the middle of the night, talking the whole way, and Matt can't sleep. I love it. By the way, those are some prescient dreams from Rand. They're pretty to the point. I mean, everything everything about it is interesting. But A lot of it's just nightmare fodder. I don't think so. I think every piece of it rings true, at least to a point. Yeah, I mean, currently, yeah. Well... Not too much of it is like Min style foretelling or anything, but I guess some of it is. I mean, pretty much all of it is. Like the idea that like, I don't know, he's way too obsessed with the queen. Still, a lot of it's a queen. Like, well, yeah, she's useless. That's she gets lit on useless. fire and dies. It, the queen's led to the land. Dragon one with the land. Which, by the way, you may be the dragon. Uh, dreams about you know. Obviously, the land of Warren don't die, at least currently, yet. Um, you know, Tom Marilyn understanding the truth of all these things, like I, I, he's kind of come to a point where he realizes he does die on a wave of white fire. Well, it's called come. Anyway, so we what should talk about the fact now? that our ride, Mister Bunt, is one hundred percent amazing at the fact that you know what he does. He gives the history of technically Rand on that. Like, Unintentionally, he gives the history of Camelin. He gives a yeah. lot of like he's amazing info dump. Recalling from my notes from uh, what I didn't bring over to your house tonight, I wrote something along the lines of a uh, royal family info dump. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's like, I mean, yeah. it tells you all of it. Th- there is a lot of Andor backstory here. He talks about how the crown is connected to Tarvalon. Ka- he talks about like. Ka- uh, Karen- how racist he is to I said I. What's that race? He's very They're racist. not a race. He's very They're not racist. a race. He's... Wait, aren't they? They were born that way. Huh? Jono? I don't think that makes them a race. Oh, because yeah. they're racist. You're definitely a race if you're born that way, just like people with red hair. You fucking ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Am I a race? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think ginger's a race. I think again. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, rethought. Still, don't think so. I mean, there's, think only, there's only there's only three races. races. Yeah, three races: <laughs> brunette, blondes, and gingers. <laughs> the three. This is three races. It's incredibly racist too. Everything that doesn't fit in that. There's only three races, guys. All right, but uh, <clears throat> I mean, where was biologically I? speaking? Jesus, <laughs> I've said some fucked up shit, but technically, that should take the cake, the bue cake. <laughs> it's like there's billions of people that don't follow in that category and Joe apparently doesn't see them because he's not racist I don't see race Jono <laughs> just, there's just only, don't, I, I think there's I, only I, three though I can't wait to see how this is edited by Joe race. who's racist it's gonna make me sound racist no all this is fine yeah it's just funny if it's it's just funny whatever happens there's always more racist on Joe than me edit point um <laughs> 
<laughs> what else happens? A, that Seriously. was the best joke of the night. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. This is my penis. Tom's so confused right now. <laughs> Jonah just paused and hadn't said a word. I don't know what's happening. I was waiting for some. I, I, I was waiting to, to get into it on that talk after this week, so I just gave it. And then we have like, another chapter. No, we no, don't. we don't. We've only done three. That's all there That's was. That's all there was. Oh shit! <laughs> I thought we were doing four for a, a thing. No, I do. It's a. It has been ending up that it is for a thing, but we're not doing uh, for a thing. We're doing page count, and this <laughs> was an enormous chunk of the book, so it was just three chapters. Shit. That's why when, I, that. when I started the episode, I said 32 through 34. I did not, I did not listen to that. <laughs> that's, that's almost funnier than ending on a joke, so that's podcast for this week. If you have any comments or questions, the best way to find us is on Twitter, at Twatcast. I'm ready for chapter 35. Listen, wherever you get your podcast, you can find us on iTunes, Twitter, Stitcher. Listen wherever you get your podcast, so you can email us at twicast at gmail. Do I need to do the whole outro? No. All right. Listen wherever you get your podcast, you can find us. <laughs> I got it. My BAC's in the mid Fuck it. Go for it, Tom. Listen, wherever you get your podcast, you can email us, twatcast at gmail.com. Thank you, Thomas. You We're on Patreon do- now. There you go. Now! <laughs> that's that's at patreon.com slash twatcast. <laughs> With an O. If you enjoy the show, help us out and give us a dollar. Give us way more than a dollar. Yeah, give us two. That's I twice. Of course, to, that I don't, we don't need money. Who we won't be naming because Joe doesn't have his notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't name our current patrons, Tom. I name out, I call out new patrons. New, 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 new. Jono, you say Twock has theme song brought to you by Taffy Bennington. Taffy Bennington has brought to you the Twatcast theme song. <laughs> At Sing with Taffy on Twitter and Anarchy 101 on YouTube. At Sing with Taffy and Anarchy 101 on YouTube. Join us next week for part... Sorry. <laughs> My fucking... Uh, next week for a fart? <laughs> I said part. <laughs> then you snorted. Join man. us <laughs> next week for The Wheel of Time. Whoa. Book one, The Eye of the World. Part 10, chapters 35 through 38. I'm Joe. You've been listening to Jono. Jono. And Tom. Thank you, man. Keep the chance to kill the animals. <laughs> Study <laughs> everything. Everyone Not just math. Odds are you probably won't work out math. Maybe study your literature, study anything, not be us. Yes, they had to survive in the woods for the coming apocalypse. John is the wild card, always talking shit. Joe's the straight man, he's a total dick. Tom calls in if he's not too busy. We are Oh, hey Oh, hey John, who's the best Beatle? Uh, ooh, probably George. Oh, nice choice. What? Joe, who's the best Beatle? I mean, that's my answer. He nailed it. They both, George is the best. They both say George. Who goes second? John. Who's, who's, who's the second best Beatle? John. <laughs> it's probably John. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I said my favorites were, Lindsay said Paul was the best, and I said John is the best, and Paul's not even my top two, and she got really upset. So they just said the same thing I did, just opposite. He's the only one that's fucking knighted. It's John and George. Well, that's not fair. Who gives a fuck about being knighted? No one's going to knight the dead guy. I like George the best because he's the weird one who makes weird music later on when they get really weird, and that's some of their best music, I think. I can't even believe this bad Obviously, John's better than Paul. He's just very straightforward. Look, I, here's the deal. All right. Ringo was the least talented by far. We all know well, that. And we can all agree Ringo's four. 
Like, yeah. who has even been talked about? Like, the fact is that actually Paul played more of the drums than Ringo, because Paul was originally a drummer, and then actually had to show Ringo how to play several of them. However, though, Ringo had the technically really the first... Time. Don't let a woman talk. Technically, uh, that was amazing. You're welcome. Ringo was the first one with a top ten hit after the Beatles ended. I mean, I'm not saying Paul's not talented. He's wildly talented. Paul is probably, I like George the best because he's the weird one that I love because he makes all the weird music talented. that comes later. <laughs> but John is way better than Paul. I don't know about that. Like, I've got to be honest. Paul is incredibly talented. I, I'm the not problem saying he's with not. Paul is the fact They're that... They're all incredibly all talented. Except for Ringo. Yeah, he's a control freak. <laughs> Paul is a... Yes. <laughs> On the other hand, John is... George's guitar sound was a perfectly... They're very good technically and musically. But yeah. They're not like so. My, my favorite guitar player is Jimmy Page. Okay. Like, that's when I was in my you know teens, late to, to early twenties. I wanted to play guitar like him, so I got the guitar. He is an over the top fucking. I'm gonna put on thirty different fucking notes that you need. George only plays to those twelve seconds you need. He'll do twenty four notes. That's yeah. it. Yeah. He will play it precisely, perfectly, and nothing to added. Wonderful. So, to me, George embodies this, like, aspect of the four of them that So starts, artistic. Yeah, that starts bringing in all, like, the weird shit that comes, like, later, a little later on. Like, at first, they're just, like... They're so poppy. Yeah, they're very poppy. But they're and wonderfully they're, poppy. Oh, agreed. But, like, yeah. later on, they start getting weird, and a lot of that is, like, George's influence with the drugs and the weird sh- instruments that they bring in and the all fingering. the weird... Yeah. yeah. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure a lot of that influence is acid. Yeah, right. Which is, but again, what I said, like with the drugs and the weird instruments that they start bringing in, but like a lot of that is George, but then of the two that are left, John and Paul, I I, 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 I put John over Paul. Well, that's because, as Tom was saying, John brought more drugs. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's literally who bought the most drugs. You can just find their receipts. I basically said who bought the most drugs. George, yeah. John, Paul, Ringo. Paul, Paul Ringo. <laughs> R- Ringo, is, Ringo still hasn't bought drugs. <laughs> Do you still, remember it? He's still never done anything. Remember Walk Hard, the, uh, the Dewey Cox the story? The Dewey Cox story where like uh, Tim Meadows is like, and he never once paid for drugs. <laughs>